I've been working in the planning area for about 25 years in Ireland now. Um, and I think I, I, I was obviously asked by um, the Department of the Environment, oh, it's okay, Verna, um, to, to join the department in 2000 uh, to assist it in preparing our national spatial strategy. I think in hindsight I was a very good choice uh, to join the department team because I was born in Dublin, uh, up here from Cork and Clare. I lived most of my adolescent life in Cork, educated in Mead. I live in Kildare, I married a male woman, and I spend most of my spare time uh, travelling by boat and bike up through the centre of the country. So, uh, and indeed, of course, I have northern links as well, so I'm a bit like Charlie Hawhey, uh, but somebody who can claim roots in most parts of the country. Um, I'm going to respond to Berna's paper by, I suppose, drawing out a number of, uh, sort of key issues that I think maybe should be just mentioned, and particularly, I suppose, bearing in mind my experience in, in preparing the NSS and, and implementing it over the last couple of years. The first point I would like to make is, and it is very significant, that the spatial strategy and the, the, the process that le led up to the preparation of the spatial strategy in 2000 represented, I suppose, a very significant political and institutional awareness that the regional development question and strategic planning needed to be addressed in an Irish context. Um, there were a number of reasons for that. Um, and I suppose some of the key ones that I suppose are important to bring out would be, first of all, the political dimension, in that for a whole variety of reasons, in, including our membership of the European Union, uh, very pro-enterprise policies, <coughs> taxation policy, etc., our, our links in a, in, a, in a global world and obviously across the water to, to the United States as well as obviously uh, Europe, um, we started to perform very strongly during the 1990s uh, in relation to economic development. And there was a concern, however, that there was an imbalance, there was a, a difference in pattern in terms of how that uh, development was proceeding. And that, to some extent, a little bit like Berna's uh, references to Connacht and, and, and to Heller to Connacht, that the West was being left behind. So there was a political consensus that with the very strong growth of foreign direct investment and employment growth on the eastern coast of the island, um, that that's something needed to be done in a wider regional development context to provide for a more balanced uh, pattern of development. Um, in economic terms, a lot of the agencies that were involved in the economic development area were also setting out views that in the context of our increasingly competitive performance in a globalised uh, context, that uh, Ireland's long-term strategic interests would be, would be best served by having a long-term development framework. And I suppose the evidence base is very important. Many people refer to this. There was some excellent work done by uh, regional development agencies like Shannon Development, like IDA, like FORFOS, um, and uh, the Economic and Social Research Institute that collectively, I suppose, generated a consensus, an institutional con consensus which collided with the political consensus that something needed to be done in the regional development space. Our own department as well had been quite prominent in relation to sustainable development and had prepared a strategy in 1997 um, uh, about creating more sustainable patterns. We're a very low density, car dependent, uh, and quite rural uh, uh, country and that poses I, I suppose a number of challenges in terms of water quality, transport and all the various issues which others were talking about today. And we also had an unlikely ally uh, in the form of our finance department um, which also I suppose joined the fray in relation to calls for a national spatial strategy because I suppose the Department of Finance became increasingly aware that without a structure to organise the long-term growth of the country, um, there was a danger that there were going to be diseconomies associated with congestion on the East Coast and underutilised potential on the West Coast, stranded assets, underutilised infrastructure. So senior officials in the Department of Finance effectively started to push for an NSS as well. So we had an unusual collision between political, institutional, administrative, economic and other forces that led to the decision, the um, very significant government decision in the context of the National Development Plan 2000-2006 that uh, our department would be tasked with preparing a national spatial strategy. <coughs> and for our visitors abroad, um, from abroad, it should be just remarked that our National Development Plan is not a spatial plan as such. It in, in effect is a sectoral investment plan in relation to what we're doing in terms of public and, and other forms of investment, EU investment and private sector investment in a whole range of areas. It's not necessarily a spatial plan. But the 2000-2006 plan a national development plan effectively said that to structure longer term investment out beyond the cycle of the 2000-2006 plan and indeed to inform its mid-term review that there needed to be a longer term uh, national spatial strategy. Um, I think it's also important just to remark that um, 
We were assisted an, uh, to a very considerable degree by our colleagues in Europe in relation to um, preparing the National Spatial Strategy and, and to some extent in recalling some of the conversation yesterday, the NSS um, was very much, I suppose, maybe a, a, a daughter document or a partner document generated at a time when many other European countries were laying out grand plans uh, that were, I suppose, very much uh, uh, driven by the optimism and the sense of the grand projet uh, at European level and uh, obviously culminating in the uh, initiative of the EU member states in preparing the European Spatial Development Perspective in 1999, which as a young planner joining the Spatial Planning Unit in the Department of the Environment was a fantastic toolkit of ideas and concepts uh, uh, with which to effectively unleash myself onto the, uh, the Spatial Planning Agenda here, here in, in, in Ireland. So that's very important uh, to, to acknowledge. Um, in relation to, uh, I suppose, the, the uh, relationship as well to fiscal m mechanisms and that, and, and I suppose it's very important just to remark that uh, we're, the NSS doesn't speak uh, so much to a, a, a statutory planning process, though it, it obviously uh, sits at the top of, of the hierarchy of the planning system. It also was a very important instrument linked to the National Development Plan. 2000-2006 uh, and uh, its successor 2007 to 2013. Um, Berna has, I, I think, very accurately and very fairly uh, set out many of the implementation challenges that um, the NSS has had to deal with since its uh, gestation and publication in, in 2002. So I'm going to do maybe maybe more on the on the uh, on the plus side, and I think a number of things that I think I would um, highlight, uh, having been involved in the implementation process, as I said, for many years include the, uh, the investment support um, by key departments and agencies who have in the main, and no less than our own uh, Department of the Environment, uh, Community and Local Government, which is, has been responsible for, for spending in terms of uh, housing, water services, uh, previously transport and community development, just to mention some of them. Um, there's been a very significant improvement in the stock of the physical infrastructure um, of Ireland. Uh, we're going through a very, very difficult phase at the moment. Um, very high levels of unemployment, uh, unprecedented, uh, uh, I suppose, lack of confidence in our country. Um, and it is very, very important just to remark that in the context of the uh, difficulties that we face, we have achieved extraordinary things over the last few years in relation to renewing our stock of physical infrastructure. And a lot of that has been informed by the spatial strategy. We completed, uh, to the end of 2010, over 1,000 kilometres of interurban motorways to a carriageways between all the key cities. Now, you may have views about that in relation to the modal split, but, you know, having journeyed from different parts of the country through dangerous roads in the middle of the night, you know, um, obviously good transport links are very, very important in the context of regional economic performance. Um, we've also totally renewed our intercity rail infrastructure. We may not have the high-speed rail lines uh, that you'll see in parts of, 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 of Europe, but it's not that long ago since one of our intercity services travelling from Dublin to the centre of the country fell off the track because the sleepers were rotten. And that recognised, uh, that, that preempted a major investment, multi-billion euro investment in our, in our public transport uh, infrastructure ever since. And the renewal and, and reinstatement of some lines between gateway locations uh, since then. We've provided a lot of uh, water, wastewater and, and water services infrastructure in line with EU requirements and obviously to facilitate long-term growth. And we have, you know, enabled a lot of regeneration uh, of, of, uh, of, of problem housing areas uh, in parts of our major cities. The NDP 2007 and 2013, uh, which was heavily influenced by the NSS, also proposed uh, a measure that I was very closely involved in developing, but ultimately was stillborn uh, as a result of our economic uh, uh, woes, a 300 million euro uh, competition, if you like, for innovative mechanisms to bring forward uh, projects and, and renewal of various gateway locations around the country. It got as far as a memo to government, but unfortunately the uh, fiscal crisis that emerged in 2008 and 2009 effectively did for the, G the GIF, the Gateway Innovation Fund, and it has been uh, uh, postponed ever since. We've also developed a number of innovative um, and interesting models in relation to uh, planning in terms of our strategic development zones. Maybe you got a chance to see some of those um, uh, as you travelled around. And we've made progress in relation to our relations with our 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 friends in Northern Ireland, uh, which continue uh, uh, to this day. We faced uh, challenges as well, and uh, Bernie, you, you, you alluded to that in the context of, I suppose, the relationship to the statutory planning system. And whilst, of course, uh, uh, we were doing a lot of work in terms of getting the NSS aligned in the various different sectoral plans and programmes, 
we recognised, I think, during 2000 and 2005, 2006, that the relationship with the statutory planning process was not going too well. You've given out all the reasons for that, but the, uh, the difficulty with zoning was, was a major problem. I was involved in six out of the seven ministerial directions on development plans in Leash, uh, Waterford, in, in uh, Mead uh, uh, and Dublin, yeah, various different locations, um, as we've effectively started to realise that the uh, planning system at local level was becoming uh, increasingly dysfunctional. Um, and that is why I suppose a lot of our work over the last few years has been in the legislative area as we try to uh, not only, I suppose, de devise a, a planning hierarchy that, I suppose, speaks in a sectoral uh, investment and coordination context, but also speaks out to the statutory uh, planning system. Um, in fact, actually, when I was working in the department, and I, I think this, by the time the sixth uh, direction had gone through, my new uh, assistant secretary, my, my boss, had said to me uh, very simply, either the planning system at local level is going mad, or the planning inspectors in the Department of the Environments are going mad. So I think when we put the evidence in front of him, I think he found uh, fairly clearly in our favour. And that led, of course, to the, um, the, uh, the decision uh, which was then, uh, I suppose, put, uh, pushed forward by the then Fianna Fáil Green government. Indeed, we, we have a former uh, uh, minister uh, from that government uh, with us here today to prepare the uh, 2010 Planning and Development Amendment Act. This included requirements around evidence-based core strategies, quantitative assessment of uh, uh, needs for development land, and really was a visible demonstration that the NSS was now having a profound effect on our national planning legislation. Some might say, I'm going to read from this actually, oh, that's, that's not too bad. Some might say that the 2010 legislation was too little too late, closing the proverbial stable door after the horse had bolted. However, taking on board and timescales was mentioned yesterday as well, the timescales that spatial strategies deal with, 20 to 40 years typically, it might be argued in converse that the experience in implementing the NSS had to unfold in order to inform the evolution uh, and, uh, of the, and, and implementation of the strategy. We're now, I suppose, um, uh, also we've made progress on a number of other fronts, regional planning guidelines you mentioned uh, adopted in 2010. Almost all of our 34 city and county councils uh, have adopted core strategies. We've introduced an innovative planning information system, <coughs> www.myplan.ie, that in effect pulls together all of the planning information of the different local authorities in one place. And we're taking comprehensive action on some of the more visible downsides of our housing boon, unfinished housing, and, and work with our National Asset Management Agency. We face, as I said, huge challenges uh, in the context of our economic uh, crisis and, and, and ongoing sort of challenges that go out of that. Um, and uh, Dr. Grist talks about the, the work of the Planning Tribunal, uh, which obviously highlighted the uh, uh, outcomes from abuses of our planning system in the early 1990s, which obviously happened way before the NSS and various different legislative developments since. Mm -hmm. And obviously we'll be bringing forward recommendations to deal with the Mahan Tribunal and its report uh, in due course. And maybe it'll be in the context of that response that a definitive judgment can be made as to the degree to which our experience as a country since 2008 will finally ensure that the concept of proper planning and sustainable development, as is referred to in the preamble to our Planning and Development Act, permeates all of the institutions of the state. But, and I think this is interesting, just if I just could uh, get another minute or two, um, it, it's important just to sort of, I suppose, compare and contrast our, our experience in Ireland with maybe other, uh, Euro particularly European countries, in that whereas I suppose maybe the appetite for spatial planning and that maybe is waning, uh, maybe to some degree, because of, I suppose, wider sort of confidence-related issues and nationalistic tendencies and all of that. Um, spatial planning, rather than being, being associated with a period in Ireland's history where some might regard uh, a, a, as an irrational exuberance, uh, and therefore irrelevant in moving through and out of a recession, there's actually a sustained support, support for spatial planning and mounting interest in revisiting Ireland's approach as well as the institutional structures essential to its implementation. Um, so while we've reviewed the legislation in 2010, we're also likely to, uh, uh, I suppose, further uh, uh, revise the legislation in the context of the Mahan, the Mahan Tribunal. Indeed, there is some thought already developing in the department about how indeed the NSS might be succeeded. And whilst it's far too early to predict what the, NSX, the next NSS might look like, and obviously it's a matter for government, it's safe to assume the following. And this is, I think, picking up upon themes that were raised by some of the other papers in relation to what spatial strategies are about. First of all, um, there'll be a need to establish a legislative framework to define the purpose 
um, of the NSS. Vincent talked about purpose, to oversee the process of its preparation and implementation in involving political oversight, public consultation and integration of environmental requirements driven by EU directives. There will be, secondly, a requirement to build on what has been achieved since 2002. We've effectively, uh, and indeed there's about 11,000 hectares have been de-zoned indeed as a result of the core strategies uh, uh, back in la last April. Um, there's been a lot of work done in relation to trying to pull together our different uh, layers in Ireland. Thirdly, we'll have to take proper account of the new economic realities and environmental challenges that we face in a wider European and global economic context. Um, fourthly, the next NSS will need to continue to take account of our wider territorial context, not just in a terrestrial sense and our ma maturing relationship with Northern Ireland and the EU global linkages, but our marine setting through the developing area of marine spatial planning. And finally, and most importantly of all, it's very important that the NSS must again be strongly evidence-based, uh, drawing upon the research and technological advances since 2002, such as the ESPON research programme at EU level, our own My Plan exercise, and indeed many national um, uh, centres of excellence that have emerged, uh, the International Centre for Local and Regional Development, the National Institute for Regional and Spatial Analysis and so on, that have risen up over the last few years. Preparatory work to enable progress on the matters above uh, will proceed later this year and into 2013, spurred on by wider progress uh, on planning and local government reform, which Bernie is accurate in saying, uh, the details of which are being announced more or less as I, I speak here. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, um, from my point of view, the process of preparing and implementing the NSS has been a fascinating one to participate in. Um, and as we currently wrestle with getting the message across about the value of planning, even more so in a time of economic challenge, there is an enduring sense of the contribution that spatial planning can and does make to enabling the achievement of economic, social and environmental conditions that are both sustainable and optimal. The journey will continue. <laughs>